Let's revisit one of my favourite topics, the cut cars of Gran Turismo 2. And I know we've covered them before, but this time we're going to focus on one specific car, the Volkswagen Polo 1.4 16V. I know what you're thinking, out of all the cut cars on the game, why would you pick something as average as the Polo? Well, the reason is that it's quite possibly one of the latest cut cars to be cut during development. And therefore, it's one of the most complete cut cars as well. So join me as we check out everything we know about the Volkswagen Polo that was set to appear on Gran Turismo 2. The Polo was one of the vehicles intended to appear at the Volkswagen dealership on GT2. But for some reason, it was excluded from the final, released version of the game that was sold to the public. However, the remnants of this car remain in the game's files, meaning that we can access it by using cheat codes. The best way to do this is by replacing one of the cars that is usually available to purchase from the Toyota dealership. This way, we can see how much the vehicle would have cost. 22,320 credits. Only the Volkswagen Lupo and the new Beetle are priced cheaper at the VW dealership. So the Polo would have been priced lower than the various Golfs, which makes sense, as the Golf is a larger and more powerful car in the range. It's a front-wheel drive, front-engine car, and it's advertised as having 99 bhp at the dealership, as well as weighing 2,259 pounds. As you can see above the car, it has its own nameplate, and it's also available in three colours, and they're all spelled somewhat in German. They are! Satin Silver Metallic Flash Rot and Black Magic Pearl Effect Interestingly, you can also purchase upgrades for this car too. Once you buy the Polo, its BHP drops from 99 to 98, but you can increase this all the way up to 182 brake horsepower. While I'm buying all the parts, let's consider why this car might have been cut. The best assumption we can make is that the Polo was possibly one Volkswagen too many, and wasn't really different enough from the Golfs and the Lupo. Having said that though, there are four different Golfs, and there would have even been a fifth and a sixth. Leftovers were found for the Golf TDI and the Golf Cabriolet on the Gran Turismo 2 demos. You can learn more about these cut cars on my Cut Cars We Never Saw video. I'll link to it at the end of this video. There was also another cut Polo, the Polo G40, discovered as well, which is actually mentioned in this VW Polo's in-game description. Anyway, so while I've been buying all the parts in the background, there isn't a racing modification for this car by the way. Let's go ahead and check out this car's description. Yes, that's right, the Polo even had a full write-up in the game. The Polo's descriptions are actually quite different between the NTSC and the PAL versions of the game. First, let's take a look at the NTSC version. It reads, The Polo 16V added a dash of spice to an otherwise mature and slightly sober model range in 1996, with the even nippier Polo GTI arriving in 1998. Both cars feature Volkswagen's tried and tested front wheel drive chassis layout with McPherson struts at the front and a torsion beam axle at the rear. Brakes are ventilated front and solid rear brakes discs. Both have four cylinder 16 valve engines. The Polo 16V's 1.4 litre squeezes out 100 horsepower at a raucous 6000 rpm. The GTI's larger 1.6 litre unit makes 120 HP at 6200 rpm. With the lesser power output of the two, the 16V's performance figures are considered to be more worthy of a warm rather than hot hatch. Turning in 0 to 62 miles per hour in 10.5 seconds and a 117 miles per hour top speed. The GTI is briskier with 0 to 62 miles per hour in 9.1 seconds and 124 miles per hour maximum. Small size remains the go fast Apollo's strongest advantage. Over a tight and twisty road, many larger, quicker supercars would struggle to keep up with either. And here's the car's description on the PAL version of the game. 
The Polo 16V added a dash of spice to an otherwise mature and slightly sober model range in 1996. It featured Volkswagen's tried and tested chassis layout of modern independent suspension all around comprising a pair of space-saving McPherson struts with uprated coil springs at the front end matched to a torsion beam axle with trailing arms at the rear. Body roll through corners is limited by anti-roll bars at either end. It benefits from light power assisted steering. Ventilated front and solid rear brake discs are fitted aided by ABS anti-lock to prevent skidding under hard braking on low friction surfaces and electronic brake force distribution to even out the strain from repeated hard stops in the braking system. It grips strongly on the road with 185-55 tyres on 14 inch alloy wheels. It squeezes its power out from just a 1.44 valve per cylinder engine, boosted by a variable intake manifold to give 100 bhp at a raucous 6000 rpm. The oomph is sent to the front wheels via a 5 speed manual gearbox. It turns in 0 to 62 miles per hour in 10.5 seconds and a 117 mile per hour top whack. Small size remains the go faster Polo's strongest advantage. Over a tight and twisty road, many larger, quicker supercars would struggle to keep up. In 91, a G Lader supercharger was added under the Polo bonnet to create the tearaway Polo G40. With the bolt on blower more than doubling the standard Polo's power output, heavy chassis tweaks were also required to cope with the extra oomph. The brakes, meanwhile, are ventilated discs at the front but only drums to the rear. Though again, all are enlarged and improved over standard Polo specifications. Factor in the extremely low 805kg weight of the g 40 skimpy 3-door body shell and the power plant's 113 bhp delivered at 6200 rpm makes for fairly naughty performance. 0-62mph passes in just 8.6 seconds, with a 122mph top whack. Not bad for such a titch. Volkswagen might have only ever intended to sell the Polo G40 in very limited numbers, yet it's such frill-free spirited fun that it has earned it a still loyal posse of owners several years after it ceased production. The Polo also has a description on the Japanese version of the game. Sadly, I can't read Japanese, so someone out there will just have to tell me whether it's different again. The Polo also has its own specs, which you can see on screen here. Also, its resale value is 5,580 credits. The only things that are really missing from this car are its in-garage name, which appears as two lines, and also its replay name, which is blank. One other thing to mention about the Polo on the Japanese version of the game is that it actually has a name. You can see it here in the garage and also in the bottom right hand corner. It still doesn't have a replay name though, sadly. Thanks to the game files of Gran Turismo 2, we can learn that the Volkswagen Polo was intended to appear as an opponent in the Compact Car World Cup. Although with the power limits set at 246 bhp for races 1 and 2, and 296 bhp for race 3, the Polo falls way short of these, with its maximum brake horsepower being 182. Although the game files tell us that race 1 and 2's typical opponents range from a power output of about 140 to 150 bhp, meaning that the Polo was probably best placed here, just without all of its power upgrades fitted. Race 3's opponents range from about 190 to 200 bhp, meaning the Polo would have come up a little short here. Also, the Volkswagen Polo's name still shows up in the intro movie to Gran Turismo 2 on the PAL and NTSC versions of the game, which features on the arcade mode disc. It's actually only a few seconds in. Did you spot it? Doesn't matter if you didn't, here's a shot of it. Due to an oversight in the game's code, the Polo is the only cut car that is not blocked from being selected by the AI as an opponent. This means that it can even appear in the event generator, albeit very rarely. If you want to try to get it to appear as an opponent, pick the 83 or 85 Levin or Trueno, and pick easy difficulty. 
Hopefully it shows up for you at some point. I don't know its precise brake horsepower for the event generator race, but people have reported that it's actually usually a front runner. And I experienced the same thing when I managed to get it to appear as well. It took a little while for it to get to the head of the field, but when it did, it stayed there for the rest of the race. So there you go guys, a deep dive on the Volkswagen Polo, Gran Turismo 2's most complete cut car. Hope you enjoyed it, and see you in the next video.